Today, please join me for the Van Gogh exhibition at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. For the first time, an exhibition retraces the last three months of Van Gogh's life at Auvers, reuniting 50 of the overall 74 paintings and 30 of the near to 50 works on paper. An incredible artistic production that is not only impressive by its sheer number, but also because it contains some of Van Gogh's biggest masterpieces. On the whole, the works created in Auvers are rather less well known than those created in Arles or Saint-Rémy-de-Provence. But after 10 years of research, the experts of the Van Gogh Museum have discovered that the painter experimented with new directions both in terms of colors, brush strokes, formats and also themes during that last period of his life. Of course, the end of an artist's life exerts a particular fascination. The public wants to know what the last masterpiece was, how the artistic production can be linked to the previous works, but also how it differs. We always tend to want to draw a conclusion or acquire a better understanding of the overall artistic works, as if such thing was possible. Be it as it may, his last works undeniably played a crucial role in the emergence of his reputation as an extremely talented artist. Several of his last paintings were in fact the first to enter museum collections. And now, without further ado, let's dive into these paintings created in the quaint little village of Auvers-sur-Oise, famous since Charles-François Dubigny moved there. Van Gogh wrote to his sister that, quote, what fascinates me most in my profession is the modern portrait. I would like to do portraits that a hundred years later people would perceive like apparitions. I'm not looking for a photographic resemblance, but for passionate expressions like exaltations of character through our modern science and sense of color. His doctor's portrait has thus been executed in the same spirit as his autoportrait, with a pronounced complementary contrast of cool and warm tones between the face and the background. Both the blue cloth and the background are painted in hill-like brushstrokes reminiscent of the rolling countryside of Auvers. The painting of cows especially caught my attention. I don't think I've ever seen a Van Gogh with animals before. As it turned out, it was an interpretation of an etching his personal doctor did in Auvers, which, in turn, is an interpretation of the painting of cows the Flemish painter of the 17th century Jacob Jordaens created. During his time in Auvers, Van Gogh also did nine big-scale drawings and produced 48 pages worth of studies and sketches. These works are little known and it is interesting to see that his graphic works are as dynamic in texture as his paintings are made of dynamic brush strokes. Contrary to the drawings during his time in Arles and or Saint-Rémy-de-Provence that were done in ink, he creates most of his drawings in Auvers with sample crayons and chalk. We can also see that the person working in the field must have been added in later on. Several of the Auvers drawings have a very strong dominance of blue, which gives them a unique place in Van Gogh's works. He has visited an exhibition of Japanese prints in Paris a couple of days before his arrival in Auvers, where he must have admired several landscapes of Hokusai where blue was the dominant color, and which would explain the influence in his drawings in Auvers. This drawing is also experimental in nature due to the mixed media character of it and the dynamic brush strokes of oil and watercolors mixed in. In his letters to his brother, Van Gogh shows a certain fascination by all types of human-made housings which became one of his favorite subjects of the Auvers period. He goes for a very dynamic style with a very strong line, more graphic than pictorial. We have to state two particularities as well. The first is the dominance of round brush strokes that are inspired by Gauguin and which we find in the bushes, the trees, the fences, but also in the roofs and roads of the previous drawing. We can imagine that this is Van Gogh's way of working an element into his paintings that can only be suggested and not shown, the wind. The second particularity is the nearly monochromatic quality of his paintings. This exercise of the harmony of greens is exactly what Van Gogh has come for to Auvers for a more simple, more primitive paintwork. This one I particularly like, both for the harmony of different colors, but also for the composition and the way that he has brought out the bright sunlight on the roofs and the herbs, which to me give this landscape a particularly picturesque feeling. 
And here we have one of Van Gogh's color palettes and I just love how messy it is. This really shows us that we don't need to follow all those instructions on how to best organize the colors on one's palette. The most important thing at the end of the day is that we know our way of, around our palette and that the palette serve our goal and not the other way around. So there's really no use in overthinking it too, too much. Van Gogh painted more floral still lives in the last three months in Auvergne than in the 12 months before. Now that he's thinking of moving to the north and closer to his brother, he is more than ever preoccupied by the idea of selling his paintings in order to not be a charge for his brother. And floral still life seems like the best way forward, especially after the relative success that his sunflower still life has shown in the past. In this painting of carnations, he placed the vase quite off-center, but has beautifully balanced the composition both through the long shadow as through some of the stems bowing to the right. Here we have a beautiful study of wheat that is done in the same nearly monochromatic manner I've already touched upon. It is very flat and graphic in its composition and therefore has a particularly decorative effect. And this is yet another landscape painting that is created in a harmony of greens. The horizon is placed quite high and this is what gives this painting an interesting composition and viewpoint. I would argue that this is an interesting way of introducing some dynamics to this otherwise extremely quaint and peaceful painting. This one for me is an extremely interesting one. I would argue that it's the color that gives it a somewhat circular composition. Throughout the painting we have elements in the neighboring color displaced into the area next to it. Let's go through it clockwise starting at the top right corner. The blue of the faraway hills fell into the wheat field and became cornflowers. The yellow of the wheat field continues in form of ripe yellow grasses amidst the green grasses and then the green grasses give a distinctive greenish tint to the sky. I don't know of course whether this was Van Gogh's purpose, I'm just telling you how I personally see it. Another interesting find of mine was the similarity between the human figures of the villagers and the haystacks. In my opinion, Van Gogh gives the dynamic human figures somewhat more of a static posture, whereas the static haystacks appear nearly dancing. Was it Van Gogh's way of showing the harmony between man and nature in this rural area? Who knows? Amidst those 74 paintings that Van Gogh created in Auvergne, 13 stand out both through their artistic value and unusual format. These are double squares, stretched canvases of 100 by 50 cm, a non-commercial format that Van Gogh stretched himself. Undergrowth with two figures has the most peculiar composition of them all. There is no horizon to be found, it's an enclosed space punctuated by the geometric forms of the poplar trees, which, contoured in black, present a strong contrast with the scrambled grasses and flowers in the undergrowth of the forest. The couple is nearly ghost-like, off-scale and floating. And this one is definitely one of my favorite paintings of this series. I can't explain why exactly. I would say it's once again the light on the golden fields and on the thatched roofs that create the sunlit, serene and very idyllic atmosphere of this poeticized rural life. It might be that Van Gogh worked on these particular formats in view of an exhibition he wanted to organize. Be it as it may, it never came before the end of his life. And I would like to end this exhibition on this particular quote because it is so incredibly humbling for us all. Van Gogh, who can easily be considered one of the greatest creative minds of this world, dreamt of having an exhibition of his work at a cafe. If this does not call us back to reality, I don't know what will. Never take your successes for granted. Never expect people to understand. Just find your way and the courage to walk your path to the very end. I have now finished with the exhibition and I must say I'm really impressed with 
the quality and the quantity of items that were present in this exhibition. I did not expect it to be this big scale actually and this was a very positive surprise. I also found it very interesting that we got to see a Van Gogh that is very different from what we usually get to see from him and what is usually um, shown a lot. You know what I mean, like very dark and bright colors, um, complementary contrast in the colors. And we had something that was very much more subdued here, nearly monochromatic, um, really tender pastel tones. You have, of course, the movement of the, of the brushwork um, in most of, of his paintings, but still, it seems much more harmonious, much more tender in a way. Maybe reminiscent of the calm of the village that he was staying in. Um, I don't know, these are my suppositions, of course. And the most inspiring thing I found to be the harmony in the colors that he creates between, you know, colors that do not necessarily easily go together, but he finds the undertone in one color that goes well with the undertone in another color and I feel like this is true of all of the paintings that we've seen in this exhibition and um, yeah it is incredible really really impressive and really touching so I'm very happy to have been at this exhibition and to be able to experience it and to see it with my own eyes these are the moments when I'm really grateful of living in Paris, um, despite you know the noise and all the problems that such a big city comes with. But um, yeah, these magical moments and exhibitions like these really do reconcile oneself with living in a big city. And uh, now, before my arm falls off, I hope that you've enjoyed coming along with me to the Van Gogh exhibition and that I will see you in my next video very soon. I'm back now. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you in my next video very soon. And until then, have a nice morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Bye, guys.